A normal 2D display consists of millions of small pixels. Seen together, they form a flat two-dimensional image that looks the same no matter from which position you see it. To create a crisp and sharp image, the pixels have to be very small and closely grouped together. Today's standard resolution is called 4K and is made up of more than 8 million tiny pixels. As we move closer, we can begin to see the individual pixels. To create a complete image, each pixel has to emit a tiny dot of light in a given color and intensity. On a normal 2D display, you want the light from each pixel to shine in all directions, so everybody in the room will see a nice image. In a holographic display, however, the image should appear three-dimensional in space and also change its perspective relative to the position from where it is viewed. To experience a three-dimensional image, a person has to see two different images, one for each eye. And as the person changes position, the images seen also need to change. And all this needs to work without special glasses helping to separate the light. This is where it becomes complicated. In current known approaches, which are known as light field displays, this is achieved by directing light from so-called subpixels in different directions. Each pixel is now part of a cluster of pixels that work together to create one perceived dot of light that will change depending on the position it is viewed from. This is because the light from each subpixel is steered into a very specific direction by an optical lens. So depending on where a person is positioned, only a specific subpixel will be seen by each eye. The problem with this approach is that the perceived resolution is now 50 times lower than the actual resolution, and because there is a physical limit to how small each pixel and its transistor circuit can be, the result is a very poor resolution. Let's wipe the slate clean and go back to what the intended result was, a high-resolution holographic image that changes perspective relatively to the viewer's position. In our unique approach, each and every pixel can light up in thousands of tiny subparts. These subparts of each pixel are then steered in very specific directions through an optical lens, much like in a light field display. The huge advantage being that each existing pixel and its transistor circuit can turn on thousands of tiny subparts and therefore remain a perceived pixel without the loss of resolution and without the complexity and cost of billions of subpixels. One pixel with one transistor circuit being able to subdivide itself into thousands of tiny subparts individually controlled. This all sounds too good to be true, but let's take a look at how that is possible. In this example, each pixel is an organic light-emitting diode. Typically, the chemistry in such a diode will glow evenly across its surface in an intensity that's controlled by the amount of power inducted to it by its transistor circuit. In our approach, though, the diode has an extra photodiode layer that can pick up and convert infrared light and a micro lens layer on its backside. Behind the layer of OLED pixels, we then introduce a low resolution infrared backlight array. When one diode in the infrared backlight array is turned on, each pixel will pick up this light and convert that into a glowing subpart on the OLED pixel. This optical addressing of the subpixels happens with the speed of light, and one infrared diode activates many pixels at the same time, thereby controlling in which direction they throw their light. Each pixel's transistor circuit controls the intensity of that specific pixel in sync with the backlight. Thanks to this unique and optically addressed subpixel invention, it is now possible to leap many years ahead in the evolution of displays and have ultra-high definition and real-time generated holographic content for multiple users at a time. The ECHO approach changes the fundamentals of flat-screen displays.